planning. This is uh, Wednesday, October 27th, and this is beautiful Rutherford County. Uh, this committee has concluded for now their first and second round short list of interviews with the six technologies that we uh, felt we wanted to at least go forward with, with for the time being to get more information on. And uh, now that we have concluded that, there are some obvious steps that we need to take, one of which, and I think first and foremost, would be to uh, the mayor, uh, the mayor and I need to sit down with the four other cities that are in play. And we need some kind of a commitment uh, from them, with them, as to their participation level. We need that because, as you all have seen with some of these larger technologies that we've talked with, there is gonna be a shortage of tonnage just from Rutherford County alone that we can produce by ourselves uh, to, to make it profitable for some of these bigger players. So they need more tonnage per day. Uh, so we, we need, we would like to have full participation, right, in the county, in the cities. If we can't do that, we have to scale down our direction on which we talk and negotiate with some of these technologies. Uh, some will not be of any interest at all if we cannot come up with the tonnage that they need to sustain uh, a profitable enterprise. Uh, then, you know, the other arm of this giant octopus is, as a county and this committee and uh, our constituents and uh, to talk with the other total 21 members of the full commission, you know, where, where do we want to go? Do we want to accept just Rutherford County trash? Are we willing to take in a few neighboring counties to get recyclables? Um, or we, we have not ever vetoed, but we have not really given much full length discussion in a regional plan. Uh, so those things are still out there, you know, hanging to, to be debated at some point in time. So I just, you know, I, I hope you all kind of went through your notes over the last several weeks. Uh, I tried to do the same and tried to make a, a minimum amount of notes or points of interest. And let me just kind of give you a few of those which may spark some discussion and then maybe guide this discussion a little bit on, on what we want to do. Um, you know, early, early on in this committee's um, formation, uh, we talked a little bit about organics. Uh, we did not talk about organics much with the six technologies that uh, came before us, but you know there were there were comments about 30% of our waste is made up of organics, and uh, that could be something that we could really move the needle on. Uh, Pratt, I think it was Pratt, is the one that mentioned that 40% of our curbside pickup material or our municipal waste at curbside, 40% of that could be recycled. And I know these numbers are all ballpark numbers, so we, we're not gonna hold anybody to that, but uh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty impressive number. 40% of everything we pick up at the home could be recycled. Uh, we know that we have 20 acres uh, available next, uh, uh, next to a rail spur right and then we have not discussed at least I, not to my knowledge have discussed with the city about some of their property where they have their mulching facility if we ever wanted to put something together with the city uh, in that location as well uh, you know we we've kind of we've we've gleaned numbers from from mac over the last several months about you know, how many tons of trash we picked up at schools. Um, we, we know about how many tons 
we get between Rutherford County and the city of Murfreesboro, uh, that's approximately 90,000 tons. And then we've you know heard the old rule of thumb talked about many times about approximately one ton per person per year. So simple math would tell you if we were all in, we ought to be generating 360 some thousand tons. Uh, that's a big number that the big boys would like to have and see, but you know, even even that kind of number doesn't necessarily, you know, make them do a song and dance because they they need two to three to four thousand tons a day to operate some of their big machinery. So, I'm I'm just trying to get it all in in a perspective. Uh, some talked about we should take small steps and start with a transfer station and numbers of that were kicked around anywhere from you know 10 to 20 million dollars for a transfer station and a MRF somewhere around 25 million dollars um, the we, we talked some about waste to energy and we can talk about that tonight if you want or at other point in at other times, but I think the general consensus on that was we don't have near the waste in order to keep that churning to create waste to energy in this location. We would have to take on, we would have to be a regional facility or have to have a regional facility to do that. Uh, and, and as we know, many of us have seen the waste energy facility in Huntsville. Uh, to build that now would be close to a billion dollars. So, uh, you know, anything can be done if you want to throw a lot of money at it. Uh, we, we talked about some of the other types of waste to energy and even aircraft fuel uh, possibilities. Uh, that still may come at some point in time, maybe not in my lifetime, but that is still in the R&D stage, so that is not totally a, a dead animal. Uh, we also learned a little bit about how many kilowatt hours uh, can be derived from a ton of waste. And then we also learned the, the hard lesson that the fact that we're right here in beautiful TVA country where electricity is still inexpensive, that they don't want to give us very much if we sold back to the grid. So it costs you more to, to collect the trash and burn it than it would be for what they'd pay your extra for uh, to do so. Uh, you know, we talked about how nice it would be to, if we had a big, uh, a big giant uh, manufacturing facility that we could set up uh, a power plant nearby and feed them directly with, with power and in some parts of the world they do that, but even then during those discussions, I noted that uh, you would, s w one big factory is n not gonna do it. You would need multiple. Robert P. talked about could we get the school systems, you know, on board. Well, I, I suppose you could, but then you'd have tons of infrastructure and transmission lines to get to schools to be able to, to do all that. So again, you can do anything if you want to throw a lot of money at it. Uh, what we did find in, in our conversations with uh, some of these technologies is uh, right now from a recycling standpoint, one in particular uh, loves the cardboard and wants all our cardboard and wants everybody's cardboard from around uh, our region and they, they need a fair amount of it. Um, so there's no reason why we could not talk in terms of multiple solutions or multiple partners as we go forward. Uh, with one being a specialty item like this, another we talked with specializes in just C&D, construction and, and demolition equipment, which there's a huge void in this part of the world for that type of uh, waste. Right now it just goes to Republic Landfill, which just, it sickens me. It sickens me the fact that I come from a building background and we see all these new homes being put up in Rutherford County and every new home has a big dumpster, metal dumpster out front where all the construction waste go. It, it almost brings tears to my eyes to think that all that lands up buried in a landfill. It, it 
that is a very Neanderthal way to handle our waste, and, and that really disappoints me. Um, you know, we, we heard costings, um, you know, tipping fees, host fees, all over the board. Uh, I mean, so all over the board, you, you couldn't even hardly put a range on it. And a lot of those were pre-qualified with the fact that, look, until we really know how much tonnage we're gonna have, it's hard to put a number on. So the, the bigger players in particular, two bigger players who are the two largest in North America, basically kind of said, until we really know how much waste we're gonna have or you can promise us, we can't really give you a hard number. And, and uh, I accept that, uh, you know, it's, that's kind of like, you know, if I want to build a house, they'll, and I'll say, well, how much square foot's that gonna cost me? Well, it depends on, do I want formica or granite or tile from Egypt? Well, you know, we're, what, there's a lot of what ifs there that we don't, we can't even answer yet. So some of their, some of their costing answers were either very vague or very pre-qualified. So uh, that, that was probably in somewhat on purpose so they could stay in the game as well. But uh, there was you know, a fair amount of revenue share discussion and then a lot depended upon, okay, well, are we gonna uh, offer some of that 20 acres up as part of the package? Are we gonna pony up some dough of our own to be a partner? Are we gonna go out with a P3 and find uh, another uh, large commercial or investor and have a true P3 investment? So again, there's opportunities out there and there's options for us to really uh, look at. Uh, and really to sum up, or to conclude I should say, you know, property is one of the carrots that we have host fee, a tipping fee, or, or, or trash for free uh, are certainly part of the nego negotiation points that we would have. Um, you know, I talked about whether it's a Rutherford County only, a few counties, or a regional concept, but you know, the main thing is we gotta know how much mass we're gonna to bring to the table. Because the big folks need to know how much mass we're gonna to provide to say, okay, we can do it with you. And to do that, we're gonna to have to scale our operation down to do this much mass, and it's gonna cost you this. Or we'll take your mass, and if you wanna go out and partner with a couple other counties and grow that mass just a little bit, your price is then gonna be reduced accordingly. Simple supply and demand. So that's kind of what I gleaned through my notes over the weekend. Um, uh, I, I do want to uh, 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 do a reminder. I don't want to do anybody injustice in terms of these applications, but I also want to remind you that uh, waste away, uh, we, we think, has um, uh, a, a study going on through Griggs and Maloney uh, to look at city of Murfreesboro's um, issue. And if what I wrote down in my notes was when Waste Away was here last, was that in, first of all, they were gonna have a meeting with uh, TVA, I believe in October, and then they also said, you know, in about six months, they were gonna have a much clearer picture of, of where they were. So if that was in October, I think that was a September meeting. So that puts it end of Q1 in 2022, Waste Away may or may not have a clear vision on if they, if they have anybody that'll take their pellets in this part of the country. I think, I think, Dangerous, I know. I think they kind of said, we don't really have a problem selling our pellets nationally, but just in, middle, in the middle part of the country, we do. And so until they can get the transportation part worked out, 
and find a source close that it's cheap to haul, then you know, there's, there's talking a game right now. But they said they'd have a clear vision in March. So if, if we don't cut them or, or if, we, if we let them hang on, they, we may know something more either through this uh, Griggs and Maloney study or t through their own findings, whatever, whatever that may be when they said in six months they'd have a clear vision. So um, I will also tell you, and then I'll, I'll promise I'll be done, MBL, which is the group that came, uh, Mike Linda, I believe is Matthew Linda, uh, came and spoke. He's the one that originally showed us the really cool uh, recycled material that made construction boards, uh, which really got him an invite to talk with us. And as you know, they talk very little about construction boards. Uh, he sent us a, another document last week that says, hey, you know, still really like to work with you. Um, like to do a P3, you put up 40 million, we'll put up 40 million, be equal partners. We'll do a long-term agreement. And if you do the math on the long-term agreement, our $40 million investment would get us $75 million in return. We'd be a 49% partner slash owner. <clears throat> but he also mentioned then the, he talked more about the, the mater building material side of it. So if we want to talk to those cats some more, and if, uh, if, if, they, want to, if they want to talk to us, I want to hear about the building material, recycled building material sign, because before they kind of said, you know, yeah, we're, we're this company and we deal with this company and the, the building material side's kind of over here. They acted like there was really no cross direct communication with them and they were just another subsidiary. Well, Steve and I and the mayor, it was the building products that got them to Murfreesboro be able to talk with us and if they have something to say about that I, I want to hear from that technology otherwise I, I don't really care what they have to say so well, I think Steve has actually said or his plan was to look if you want to if you want to really chat with us and be different you're gonna have to get your building people over here and, and do something and show us what you got but th that's just a aside so that's it for me I'm going to open the floor to all your thoughts, discussions, what ifs, ifs, ands, or buts, um, what your thoughts are. Mr. Chairman, I was just going to add on to what you were talking about there with MBL. <clears throat> I would also request that they come with an idea of their own input, their own money, their own location, their own uh, everything, and not a P3. We had talked about a P3 in the meeting, and we had talked about a P3 before, and they sent us back that information. So uh, uh, we're expecting something back from MBL on their own, you know, of doing something, if they're interested in doing something. And then also, like you were talking about, the materials that's the out product, and, uh, and what are they, um, do they have contracts or agreements with Home Depot, Lowe's, whoever, you know, uh, some backing on that. But we would need a lot more information, of course, for the Rutherford County got involved, but right. but that part on their side is just as a whole on their side. What would they do by themselves coming to Rutherford County? What would they require as well? Yeah. The, the last, I, I, you know, you know me, I always say it's the last thing I'm gonna say, and then I say eight more things, but the the old mind, the little marbles that swirl around in this brain, you know, every once in a while, it's kind of like pinball. Once it'll land in the little slot and the, the light will go off. Um, yeah, tilt, yeah, I'm, I'm always on tilt. The city of Murfreesboro, to the best of my recollection, uh, has land or is pursuing land around the Joby Jackson area for a transfer station. That discussion is not new. It's been, it's several months, if not over a year old. Now, whether they're actually gonna go through with that or not, don't know, but 
keep in mind, and, and again, we haven't sit down with anybody and really started to talk turkey about what the big long range plan is going to be. But so if that if that is their desire, and as some of these other technologies has said, you know, you guys need a transfer station. Okay, do you let a Murfreesboro build one up on that end of the county, and we look for one down the opposite side for just pure transportation and trucking ease and sensibility? Um, or do we say, hey, we'll go in and do it together and make one big one? A lot of what ifs. So, I, uh, but I do want you to know that in the back of your mind, more to come on that. So, um, anyway, now I promise I'll shut up and guys have anything to say comment pontificate Rhonda if you if you have any I'm glad you're here this is Commissioner Rhonda Allen uh, I'm, I'm sure you're at the correct meeting right okay good uh, you know she hears all the great things you guys do here so I'm sure she wanted to come see the little piece of the action but if you have any comments or thoughts uh, would we'll be happy to uh, recognize you as well Commissioner, I wanted to ask you again too on waste away does it coincide with Griggs and Maloney doing the the testing and everything that they're going through with the city of Murfreesboro. And this is I don't know this. Um, does that six month time frame line up with Griggs and Maloney and their results back to Murfreesboro? Is that the same time frame? I don't know if any commissioner knows that or if you know that. If is that? I'm just going on a hunch. Okay. But they, they specific, Mike Webb specifically said in six months they will have a clear vision. So I don't know if that means because TVA is about to grant them something huge or if Washington, D.C. is about ready to pin some giant proclamation or if that's just because Griggs Maloney is finding out, hey, maybe they got something. Don't, I don't know. But whatever six months means they'll have a clear vision is all I, I could really tell you about that. No other volunteer. I'll, you want me to take? You want to, Mayor? You want to go first? You want to take Robert? All right, I'll get mine over with. <laughs> um, seen, I paid a lot of attention to a lot of these. I mean, MCL. I call Tennessee is to see if their product is uh, under codes to use, and they have not been they have not been approved at this time. Um, Craig, I'm sorry. Who was it? In, is it MCL, MB, the one with MBL, the, two by, the one that had the building products? Yes, sir, MBL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I also called the fire marshal, and they said the same thing, that they haven't approved anything as far as them. So that kind of puts us in a situation to where if we partner with them, which I think it's a great uh, product, but if it ain't any good to sell, then it's not any good to us. So 49% of that is doesn't make much sense. Right. Um, waste away uh, my personal uh, feeling about them is that they don't really have a viable facility for us to really look at that could handle a large county like rutherford county i know they had that one in mcmenville but that that wouldn't be able to handle what we have right now and i just uh kind of i'm going back on what i what i said from uh day one is i feel that republican waste management are the two big players and these guys are billion dollar conglomerates and and, and it's like a, every question i ask these companies is if you're so good and and, you, and you're a new marketing idea then why haven't these two tried to buy you you have heard me say that numerous times and you've also heard me press republican waste management on that situation and they uh, offered what they said I think uh, Rockford is a very important partner for Rutherford County. I think that they would be somebody that not only should we think about doing, we should do business with them. And I think- hey, Rockwood, I'm sorry. Rockwood, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very impressed with them. Uh, I think that, like you said, I'm in, the, I'm in the construction business and there's a lot of money that's getting thrown away into the landfill. Not only that, but it's also filling the landfill up. So I think that's a, a very good partner that we could have. Uh, I also feel the same way about Pratt. I think these are two companies that we could do a, a deal with. I think it's not something that we had to wait on forever. 
and I think they will both be very important to us. Uh, Republic, uh, the way I look at Republic is uh, based on um, the size, they offer everything that we need. As far as uh, the one thing that I am strongly for is the uh, reclaiming the landfill. And uh, they're the only one that, uh, that really bid on that. So that's one of the things I take in consideration. Waste management is, um, I think waste management is, is, a, is one of our players, uh, very impressed with them. Uh, but we got to understand that if we do business with the waste management, we got it. We're looking at anywhere between forty to sixty dollar tipping fee, and I think money is going to play a big part in this. It has to. I mean, I want to leave my kids with something not having to worry about, but also want to be able to do business to where we are viable, where we are able to uh, uh, benefit this county. I mean, I understand we have districts that are very passionate about the problems that we're facing in the landfill. But we also have a lot of districts on the other side of town that don't share the same sentiment. So we had to look at this as a whole. We had to we had to look at it as the county, and not just one district. Um, these are the way I feel about the uh, the people that we went so far. Um, I stand behind Rockford. I stand behind Pratt, Rockwood, and Pratt, and um, and also stand uh, for us to go in and uh, further negotiations with Waste Management and Republic. Thank you. Uh, one note on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, waste management. I, I did note that they said their rates will change every year. They were one of the few, I think, that either were telling the truth to us from the very get-go or, you know, said up front that, you know, we're, we can't lock into any five or ten year price fix based on today's economy that rates are going to change every year. So. Well, he also said CPI was a given. That was going to be every year. And then he said that the other prices would be negotiable, you know, not negotiable, but he also said there would be, you know, some rises in price from them based on where they've been so far. Gotcha. Okay. So what you're saying, and, and I'm not saying we're cutting anybody, but I think what you said, if you, if you had to release two technologies, MBL and Waste Away would probably be your first two to to scratch off the list and go go forward with discussion. Yes, sir. With, okay. All right. Robert. Well, Craig and I actually have drawn some of the same conclusions. What? Believe it or not, yeah. Uh, Pratt. <laughs> Pratt is uh, somebody that whether. We do business directly with Pratt, or we do business with any of the other major groups. They're already doing business with Pratt. They're taking their recyclables from uh, Republic. They're taking recyclables from Waste Management. They're taking recyclables from Davidson County. Uh, so you know, we we can partner directly with Pratt, or we can do it. Uh, they're basically going to. They're, they're going to be in our life one way or the other because they're the ones that are consuming a lot of the recyclables that we'd like to see diverted out of our landfill. So Pratt's somebody that I feel like we're going to need to look at pretty closely in the future, whether as a direct partner or a subsidiary of somebody else we partner with. Or, you know, we hadn't made up our minds whether we're going to piecemeal this step by step, you know, kind of like our chairman was saying. Uh, Rockwood, I think, is another one. We don't have a whole lot of choices as far as C&D and, C and goes and tires. You know, we didn't bring up the tires. You know, that's costing us a lot of money. I, I'm thinking that we might ought to start looking at Rockwood right now as far as taking care of our tires and helping us with our C&D. You know, we're going through the process right now of looking for a director for our solid waste department and you know working with whoever that person ends up being uh, our landfill and what direction we're going to go you know I, I think that that's one company and frankly the other companies are basically telling us the same thing we don't do that you know this guy does so those those two are the two main ones that stick out to me now here's here's the part that nobody likes is 
we got to have a landfill, guys, because what Pratt says they can take 40 percent. Well, there's 60 percent. Uh, if you take away C and D and tires, you know that might get another eight or nine, maybe 10 percent. But 50 percent of the municipal solid waste is going to be landfill unless we can find an alternative to that. And right now, the only options we've got, you know, right now we're getting free tipping with Republic. And if we stopped doing business with them today, they're still going to continue landfilling at Middle Point. They have, you know, contracts and they have the right to operate there. So it doesn't really matter if we just say, hey, we're not going to send you any more waste. They don't really care. I mean, that's going to give them a little more life on their, their existing landfill. But, you know, the other one that we've got maybe access to would be through waste management, and theirs is in Camden, I think is their closest landfill that I'm aware of. Now, there is a landfill up in Smith County, but I think it's got limited volumes. So we've got to find a landfill somewhere. Now, I think it'd be nice if Camden County decided they wanted to open one up and would go in partnership with them. But, you know, that's, that's a whole other thing entirely. But if you look at this straight up, you know, and I, I think it was what Mr. Jameson from Republic said, you know, you may love us, you may hate us, but we're, we're here. And that's a fact. Whether you like it or don't like it, you know, we've got to have a place to landfill material that we can't recycle. And we want to find a way to recycle all of it, at least I do. Now, the other thing I want to mention, and this is something else Craig and I do agree on, I would like to see our landfill reclaimed. Now, I think we had a hard bid of what, $400 million for somebody to dig it out and take care of it, make it go away. That's a lot of money. That's not, I think, even feasible, not in my mind. But uh, Republic, when I asked them, is the only group that answered back, we can talk about it, we can look at it. They, part of their proposal was, hey, we dig it all out, we put a liner in it, and landfill it back. That's not what I want. I want it gone, and I don't want another landfill put there in that place. That's my, that's me. If I had a magic wand, I could make things happen. That landfill would be gone. How to make that happen, I don't know. Uh, that would be in negotiations, and that's possibly something we could negotiate with Republic. But again, the problem with Republic is that stink that they've got. And if they can't control it, I don't know that I can do business with them. They're going to have to show me more. The last thing I want to say is this. There's still a lot of options, and there's some of these companies we've looked at that, yes, they've got some good ideas, and maybe we need to look at them. And I'm not discounting any of them. I think that, as the chairman said, the volume is going to make a huge difference. We can go Rutherford County alone. We can go Rutherford County in our municipalities, whoever wants to join. Or we could go regional. Now, I've tried to attend every meeting, public meeting, that I can since this has started. And I'm getting mixed messages from our citizens. I'm not afraid to make a decision. Misunderstand what I'm fixing to say, but I've got a question and I'd like to get this answered. Would it be possible once we decide, okay, here are, here are our options. Here's option A. We do only Rutherford and municipalities. And option B is we make it regional. Is it possible for that to go on a referendum so our citizens can decide? Because it's just like Craig mentioned a minute ago. He said one district's affected. Well, there's a lot, lot more than one district affected by that Republic landfill. I know Commissioner Piercy's, my district, your district, there's three right there that I don't even have to think far that, uh, you know, we all get complaints from that area. But what I'd like to know is, can we request to find out if we can do a referendum? I know if we were going to do a wheel tax or you know some kind of taxing uh, 
option that we can put that on a referendum, but I don't know if something like this can go on a referendum. But I'd like to know if that is an option. That way I know that our citizens are either in this or not. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not afraid to make a decision, but I also think it might be good business if we say, okay, here's option one, here's option two, here's option three, you know, basically regional or local, or, you know, do we want to expand it or don't we? My, my goals are this, I want to recycle as much as we possibly can and divert anything we can from a landfill, whether that's, you know, through a MRF with people like Pratt, you know, that's re, uh, composting the C&D uh, material, the tires, taking care of that. I want to divert all that we can and minimize what we're going to landfill, but I still think there's not enough technology out there to take care of not having a landfill at this time. Now that may change, but if we as a committee could request from the state, is it a possibility to have a referendum and then, you know, of course the commission and perhaps municipalities and us together can decide whether we would want to have a referendum if it's a possibility. But right now, I don't think it is. But I would like that question answered. Right. Before we get off of <clears throat> Robert, I need to ask you for some clarification. I, I wasn't clear about your Republic request on our landfill. Did you re restate what your desire is there? Was it, was it for I'd them like to totally reclaim and leave the land alone or reclaim it and they can build a new landfill in its place? I, I want it reclaimed, but I do not want a landfill put in its place. Now we can, you know, come up with other uses for it, to where it, whether it's building a building on it or, or making a park out of it. I just don't want a landfill going over there. Now, for instance, a MERV or something like that that is not generating smell. You know, that's not something I would object to. So you know, some of these companies we're looking at, they're looking for property. Well, we may not have enough road, uh, uh, enough room over on Florence Road. Then again, we may have. But if we don't, we've got several hundred acres there on our existing landfill. And part of that right now, there's, you know, there's at least 60, 70 acres, probably more than that, isn't it, Steve, that we could actually build on if we needed to. So I'm not adverse to different uses to the land, but I don't want it to be used as a landfill. And I want that liability gone because we don't know what the future may hold uh, as far as, you know, right now we, we're battling keeping leachate from getting into our drinking water. And, you know, that's a problem. And I want that taken care of. So I, I, again, I'm sorry for my inability to, to understand the statement. Do we want, is your desire, I guess in your statement, is your desire to have Republic reclaim it or just anybody that we can find that would do it, reclaim it, and then I, we keep the land? Anyone that would do it, but I don't know if y'all paid attention. Anytime we've had somebody walk in here and give us a presentation, I've asked them that question. Would you take material from our landfill? And every one of them has said no, except for Republic. That's the only reason I mentioned Republic here. You know, if we could find somebody else that would work with us or we can maybe do it ourselves, pull that out little by little, feed it into the MERS what we can if they find it acceptable. But uh, if you recall, Pratt said anything out of the landfill was not acceptable to them. Uh, Waste Away said, no, we won't accept anything out of there. The other one, Ideal, I don't believe that they agreed to uh, do it either. So, you know, of all of the major ones that we've talked to, they've straight up said no. And Republic is the only one, and they've said maybe. They didn't say yes, they said maybe. Yeah. All right, so, so again, you, you've heard me use the phrase hit the easy button many times in this past several months. <clears throat> what if, capital, capital what if, uh, if Republic said, 
hey, we'll partner with you. We want your landfill. We're going to release you from liability. End of story. But we have no say so on what they're going to do with that, whether they want to reclaim it, not reclaim it, reclaim it and put a new landfill and build a mountain higher, put it and put a liner on it, you know, build a conventional newly. I mean, I would think from a legal standpoint, once we turn that over, they can do whatever they want to with it. Uh, I concur with what you just said. However, my answer to turning that over to them or anybody else is no. You know, as far as that property goes, unless we're insured of uh, what that use would be in the future, then the answer is no. Uh, like I said, I don't like the idea of having landfills on our drinking water, and I don't care who's doing it. All right. So. I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I think what you're saying is you would love to get rid of the liability, but Rutherford County wants to hold on to the land and, and we do what we want to with it. If we had a means of ensuring that the land wouldn't be used for, say, a, a future landfill, right? well, something along that, that would be detrimental in my mind to our community. You know, yes, I would be open to you know some kind of suggestion there but as far as far as that goes i want that place cleaned up i don't want reoccurring liabilities for the rest of my life my children's life or in the future period and i think the only way we're going to ever do that is dig it out and get rid of it i, <clears throat> I do want to re remind everybody that when republic was here phil asked the question and this is not verbatim, but this is what I wrote in my chicken chicken scratch. Phil asked, can we work together if you don't get our property, referring to our landfill site, for disposal space? They said yes, but it just changes the price. So it, it sounds like there is some wiggle room there. Um, whether they wanted to mine it or not that they, they've always kind of told us that they're not interested in digging that up um, well one thing I want to make clear you know I was one of the original yeah. commissioners that said we're not expanding you know and that was what four years five years ago now forget how far back and then since it's come up again I've said no I don't want to expand our landfill over there so you know I'm not I'm not going along with what people might deem to be Republic's wishes, but that does not mean that I won't work with them or anybody else that can help us. And like I said, hard code facts are we got to have a landfill somewhere and we can pay to ship it to Camden or White County or whoever else may be out there, but it's gonna cost us a lot of money. And again, that's why I get back to the idea of referendum find out if we can you know us come up with here's the options and then decide from there i would ask my chairman that to find something out i don't know the answer to this but if we got republic to reclaim our landfill and we gave that land to them sold it to them or give it to them whatever we do would that not apply the jackson law apply to that so that we don't have to worry about them putting another landfill out there? Question. And Robert P is one of my, he's a dear and close friend, but I disagree with him on the referendum and I'll tell you why. Is because I don't feel that the public is educated on this matter as we have had been. And that's a lot of information. We have met several times and I still haven't grasped it a whole lot yet. So. That's the only reason that I would think that is just the main fact is there enough information out there for them to make that kind of decision. And I feel that they haven't because these, you know, this is a very complex, very uh, multi tentacles. I mean, it's tough. And um, 
I'm going to stick with what I said. I think that uh, my number one thing was getting rid of the landfill. I think it's a big time liability this county. I think it's something that we should take very serious. And, you know, one of the options that, uh, that people are going to throw out there is, hey, let's just, why are we just talking about this? Let's just ship it. I don't think that's another thing that people don't understand that the cost of that is enormous. And it is, a, it is a large investment on our part to do something like that. And so that's one of the things that I want the public to know is, is, Mr. Chairman, once we get going on this, then we need to start looking at numbers. We need to start hard looking at numbers and start giving people an idea of exactly what we're facing. Then I can see it under, you know, under a referendum in that, in that respect. But until I feel that the public is, is educated on this matter, like we're going through right now, I just don't feel that I, I can back that at all. But uh, I took enough time. Thank you. Does, <clears throat> does anybody, before we get off of the, the reclamation part, does anybody recall, I have a number that sticks in my head, but I don't know if it's accurate. Does anybody recall some of the numbers Mac used to recite to us on the probability of that long-term maintenance all the, all the leachate breakouts that we have. I mean, I know there's four or five a year and we always come about four times a year and approve a budget amendment. But I, I have a number that's sticking in my head, but I don't want to say it out loud to influence you. Do you guys remember what he put an approximate dollar amount on that it's going to take us to babysit that landfill till post closure? $630 million. And then he also said that if it would be 170, it'd be 630 million if we dig it up and ship it off and get rid of it. I believe he said that. I might be off a little bit, but not his whole lot. And then he said 175 million for us to dig it up, put another hole and put it in there and line it and put it back. That's to my understanding. Okay, if we did nothing though, there's a number that's sticking in my head for long-term maintenance and then just closure numbers. Yeah, yeah just the long-term maintenance part. If we left it over a 50-year period, wasn't it going to be $30 million or so, Chairman? What was wasn't it 20 or $30 million? I remember 30. 30 million if we do head. nothing, just $5 million a year, a million a year, and we had some... 30 years of, yeah, of, of mandatory maintenance or something like that. So if we do nothing, it's going to cost us that. It's just stringing it out. Okay. All right. I just, I just wanted to get that number in perspective. Okay. All right. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, members of the committee. You know, I ran for this. I ran against the landfill with uh, Robert's dad and Mr. Mankin, um, Mr. Bob P. and I were against the landfill in 1990 when I ran. I was unsuccessful and so was, was uh, uh, Mr. Bob. But this has been a long journey. Many of you that were on the commission before I got here three years ago were working in this direction. But if you recall, when I first got here, we made the long trek with city leaders to Sevierville. We looked at composting. Uh, it's Sevier County Solid Waste Authority. Some were able to make the trek out to, to San Francisco and, and uh, San Jose and looked at facilities of composting, a large MRF, and, and um, even there in San Francisco, a, a, um, um, it was kind of a wet, um, if you will, um, trash um, or food. Uh, recycling that they were doing, capturing the gas from that, from the anaerobic waste. Um, so we came back. This has been a long journey. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you did a very good job of, of giving us a, a, a synopsis of what all that with your notes that you've been able to take from, from um, the RFPs, but we did an RFI, if you recall, and we went through that process. Um, and had 28, 29 different companies that, that requested information, but then when it came down to putting out an RFP, we had about nine, and now we've gone through the second cycle 
of the RFPs and we're to the point that we're going to have to do something that's serious to move forward. Of course, as Chairman P and Chairman Harris have both said here tonight, yeah, our goal would like to be zero waste, uh, the first zero waste county. I've said that, but we all know that it's never really going to be zero waste anywhere. You're still going to have to have a landfill. Um, but that can still be your goal of trying to eliminate zero waste through the educational process um, for and changing the culture of how we deal with it. But I think this community is at that crossroads where we're going to have to do something. The, um, as stated, Mr. Chairman, you, you uh, correctly shared with the committee that um, as what we've seen, in order for any of these large companies to come in and, and make the investment into a MRF, build a building, bring in the recycling um, machinery on the inside, et cetera, I'm not sure that Rutherford County has enough waste stream to warrant any of them making that type of investment. Um, now, you can build it to, to grow yourself into it, but if, if we want to just make it for Rutherford County trash only, um, then there's still not enough waste stream to warrant any type of expenditure or even going into a P3 relationship. Um, it's going to take all the cities and the county working together, and still I think our waste stream tonnage is not going to be enough. Got a call from um, Mayor Cooper two weeks ago. He set up an appointment. He was in my office yesterday afternoon. They're having issues in Nashville. Two prior mayors in Metro all had waste plans, that what they wanted to do with their waste, and none of them came to fruition. Um, uh, Mayor Cooper and Metro Council has recently hired a uh, sustainability director from TDEC. She's been with them for about 20 days. He came to talk about sustainability of waste and also with transportation and how we in a growing community just like Metro, he figures that, that Rutherford County is the one that Metro wants to partner with. Um, I shared with him everything that we've been through from our RFIs to the RFPs. I shared with him um, the ones that were going to be talked about tonight. I shared with him the one that I felt made the most sense at this point um, is with Pratt Recycling because they can reduce 40% of the waste stream going to the landfill. Um, if they were to build, they were here today, Pratt was here today, um, Mr. Salmon, they had called and requested a map um, of that piece of property. They wanted to bring an engineer down and look at the piece of property, the 20 acres that we own. Um, I suggested to the president of Pratt last week when I talked with him, the possibility of working with the city of Murfreesboro on their recycling, uh, their, excuse me, their mulching facility there on Florence Road. We could put a spur right on top of the roadbed, close off Florence Road, put a spur there, combine their 25 acres, our 20 acres into a, a uh, facility to handle um, waste if Metro Nashville uh, would be interested those recyclables, if they were to to go to curbside, and probably Rutherford County would have to go to curbside recycling, would come down I-24 or come Murfreesboro Road, which are both state routes, and so is 840, so it's not going to be damaging our roads uh, coming to that facility there in Florence. You, we could talk to uh, Rockwood, who is already doing, the gentleman who owns Rockwood, actually got started at the uh, Vulcan facility where he's still taking uh, shingles and grinding the shingles, roofing shingles up and turning it back into uh, tar. Um, maybe the possibility of the chairman and I talking with the city of Murfreesboro about doing, using that facility that they're currently uh, using to chop up 
all of the the um, their waste as as far as um, uh, tree limbs and leaves and et cetera. Maybe do get uh, the guy from Rockwood to come and do the same thing that he's doing over there. Let them um, take over that facility, and we all enter into a three-way partnership with Rockwood. Enter into a partnership with um, Pratt. They want to come in and build the the MRF, and we start taking all the recyclables, which would probably between Metro and all of our cities and the county be enough to satisfy the expenditure of building that type of facility. And then, of course, Republic is right here, which would take the 60% of the trash, because Pratt's not in the trash business or in the recycling business, but it gets us 40% less going into the landfill, which negates the need for them to expand their, their footprint uh, for quite some time and would also give us ability. Uh, we're still getting to dump for free for the next six years, seven years, however long it that landfill lasts, so if 40%, you, you work that out mathematically, it's gonna extend it longer that we can still dump for free and get paid a million dollars um, to go back in to s sustainability. The cities would have to move towards uh, curbside recycling. I think, Chairman, you and I were talking why Mayor Cooper came down because they have lost their their contract or lost their company who was doing their curbside recycling. So it's not just a county, but it's almost a regional issue. But uh, I think it's, it's gonna take everybody working together to find the best way to sustain the waste stream. We're always gonna have to have a landfill. Republic is the closest. Uh, waste management is gonna charge us to either go to their Lewisburg facility at Cedar Ridge in Lewisburg or to Camden as uh, Chairman P talked about. And you're talking at least an hour to Lewisburg, if not an hour and a half to two hour trip to Camden, which is on the Tennessee River, going to Jackson. Manchester. Each way. Each way, that's right. So that's gonna limit your trips. Manchester, McMinnville, and Cannon County, the majority of their trash is going to Ray County. Eastern time zone. They take it down I-24, over Mount Eagle Mountain, through Chattanooga, up through Bradley County to Ray Clank County is where they're taking theirs. They only get two trips a day uh, that far away to take their trash. So it kind of boils down to um, those three uh, entities. I think it warrants Rockwood, Pratt, and Republic to sit down and, and start negotiating with not only the city fathers, but also with those three to see what we could work out um, to sustain us for the next 25 or 30 years as we requested in our RFP. Um, the unfortunate part is that handling trash is gonna be a, another utility bill for all citizens. Um, it's gonna cost to handle the trash. It's, We've been fortunate since 1990. It's been free. If you go to any other part of the country, it costs citizens uh, to handle their waste stream, um, which through good education, we can educate people what not to buy or why not to be so wasteful and just throwing it out on the road and or buying more things. People become more conscious when they know that they're having to pay a fee. Uh, that's coming, but right now it's free and it's gonna be free for us. But as you said, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's primitive to continue to just dump and cover with dirt. I think those days are close at hand and we need to be the leader in Tennessee. We need to show the rest of the state how we can handle our waste stream uh, productively. Uh, so I'm, I'm um, Excited about the opportunity. We've come this far. It's been three years in the making for me, uh, but we've done a lot of good hard work, a lot of good questions, but I think that, in my opinion, where it comes down to. 
so I'm open to uh, whatever direction the committee would like for you and I to, uh, what is our next step is probably what we need to decide tonight. Very good. Right. Mayor, one time, several months ago, uh, we had had a conversation about maybe doing a specific RFP for reclamation, that there was some uh, talk that uh, some people that specialized only in reclamation uh, did not send an RFP to that process. Did that just kind of, did we just kind of let that go that it wasn't a viable option or uh, it just kind of got lost in the, in the wash? I think it kind of got lost. Uh, I, my office never received clear direction from the committee. If, if that's what you want to do, we're, we're happy to do that. I mean, we put things out for bid and advertising, et cetera. But if that's the direction of the committee, we're happy to do that. Yes, sir. And there may be some companies out there that just want to come in and handle our, our C and D. But I know that uh, Mayor Cooper told, told Steve and I yesterday that they are in dire need of C&D. I think they learned a lesson with the last tornado that came through Nashville and up through Lebanon. It basically wiped them out as far as any excess room. And we're not far away in Rutherford County for another tornado. We're, they say one large tornado here can basically fill up middle point. So it, I think that's something that really needs to be looked at. And, and uh, seriously, uh, what do we do with it? I like the guy at Rockwood because he's, he's done well at it. And he, he knows how to do it and grind up tires, grind up stumps. He's got some piece of equipment, one over there. Steve and I went over and looked at it back in July and called the Terminator. It's made, it's a piece that you just drop whatever. It doesn't matter, mattresses, chairs, tires. It's made in the same town that Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, from in Germany, or Austria, excuse me, and uh, that's why they call it the Terminator, but uh, he has that type of equipment that could possibly bring that, that uh, process here. Mr. Chairman, uh, I understand the application for expansion has been paused by, by that entity. The uh, Solid Waste okay. Regional Authority. Okay, uh, that Republic, am I understanding that they I, I don't believe they pulled it. I don't think they ripped it up and threw it away. No, that it's still sitting on somebody's desk at TDEC. And that, am I correct, that a decision or will be rendered sometime in February uh, for the expansion? Well, um, in talking to Jacqueline Matupi with TDEC, she told us that, that she that the commissioner would have to s sign off on on and advertise for a public hearing and then allow them to come before the public hearing and she would be the monitor or the mediator at that public hearing to determine the uh, the commissioner's decision whether to allow or not allow um, uh, their request so until we know what that decision is and until we know if our municipality partners are going to join us in this venture? Are we kind of stuck well, uh, I, for I a while? No, I mean, sir, I don't think we're st stuck, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that that if this committee tells us, we'll be happy to to um, uh, get the other leaders, uh, uh, Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagleville together, and we'll sit down around the table and and still with the holidays coming up. You know, after Thanksgiving sure. through Christmas, nothing happens. So it's going to be January, February before we can ever really get. It may take one or two or three meetings to to sit down and start uh, taking the voice of this committee, uh, sharing with them what we've experienced and what we've gone through the process of the RFI and the RFP. We've done a lot of the heavy lifting for them, and I kept telling them, "Let us get through this process." And now it's time for all of us as Rutherford County citizens to sit down and 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 uh, make some. Uh, educated decision to move forward with our waste stream. You know, since we're giving our opinion tonight, I'm, I'm with everybody else. I'm a huge fan of Pratt, what they're doing, uh, Rockwood uh, also. Uh, of course, if I had my magic wand, uh, a company like Waste Away that can do away with 90% of that and, and make having a landfill not as big a priority as it is right now. Uh, but 
and I'll leave, I'll leave this committee with this. I attended the public forum here that night and heard all of the citizens of our, of our county. These are people that we live next door, that we shop with, that we go to church with. And the plea to the regional committee, you know, to stop the expansion is something that I will remember for the rest of my life, however long that is. And uh, that, uh, that really, that really, all those comments, uh, especially uh, from our uh, senior citizens and our veterans, how it affected them uh, really, uh, really hit home with me. Thank you, Wayne. <clears throat> to follow up on your very first question, uh, last time Becky Caldwell was here, in front of our group, we asked her about an RFP for reclamation of our landfill, and uh, she said she would be happy to put one together. In fact, she even knew a couple of companies that specialize in that kind of uh, work. Um, you know, the only problem with with Becky now is every time we want to reach out to her, it's a it's a five hundred dollar minimum. Uh, deal, but so so that just that ball got dropped, or that kind of died on the vine for a minute. Um, if we would like for her to uh, write an RFP specifically for Rand, for for re reclamation of our current landfill, she'd be happy to do that. We just are going to need to spend a little money for her to do that to get it ready. So if that's the committee's wishes. Uh, maybe at our next full meeting, public works meeting, I can, in the meantime, I can find out what that might cost, the budget might be for that, and then if we want to bring that up as a motion, we can do it then. Does that sound good enough? Okay. Yes, sir. I don't have my other notes with me, but if memory serves me right, one of the presenters and as I said, I've asked each one of them as they came in front of us, can you reclaim our landfill? Uh, there was one that mentioned Denton, Texas, if my memory serves correctly. And they said that that group, or the municipality or the county, was reclaiming their own landfill and doing it on their own. So I'll check and make sure that Denton is correct but it might behoove us to check with those folks and see how they're coming along. You know, if it's a possibility to do it on our own. You know, it may not be, but if we're gonna go so far as to get an RFP for reclaiming it, I'd like to hear what these guys have got to say. And it may not be Denton, it may be some other name. My memory may, may not be correct, but I'll, I'll dig that up, but I would like to find out what they're doing. I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a catch in my throat tonight. I know Denton was also, maybe this is where the confusion is, Denton was also home of a brand new, I think, Republic Recycling Center, one of the largest, I think, they have put together that just opened up. Um, but yeah, if you can find that in your notes, that would be good to know. Steve. Becky's last thing was 350 to get her back to another meeting. Uh, okay. It was a five, and then there was a negotiation kind of thing, and it was 350 was the last part. Okay. Um, one of the things I've had an opportunity the past few weeks since Mac's been gone to kind of do a few things out and help Tanya out um, at the landfill or in the solid waste field part. Triad came over, and I would like to probably get them to come and talk about um, these things that that Triad has seen um, and and would talk about as far as reclaiming the landfill. Uh, he was he was really against it. <laughs> I'll put it that way, in in a, in a mild manner, because I really need their company to represent themselves, you know, and and tell you, as commissioners and the mayor, what and um, his his thoughts on that, uh, because there was a some permitting that we'd have to do through the state. Uh, from his understanding, it's never been done in this state, period, and so it could be a 
a brand new thing, but that the, we can, we need to get more information. My long story short on that, it, it's not as easy as just having somebody come in with a track hoe and separate the dirt and the trash, take the trash over here and reclaim the dirt or whatever. And uh, because that dirt is touched trash, now it's it's got to go through a process as well. Uh, you can take cover. It's a whole lot to it, and so I don't. I don't want to get on. I've just skimmed just enough just to say there's some concern there that we'll have to go through. It's it's not that easy. Yeah. Phil, yeah. This is not scientific by any means, Chairman, but I just tried to get some of my thoughts out on paper. So uh, the, the one sheet that has just the, the graph of municipal solid waste, and we have four buckets that we've entertained. Waste energy, recycle compost, and landfill, right? Um, and I, I just drew transfer station there. That could be a recycle station. I don't, the only viable options that have come out of this, and we've had some consensus here, is is Pratt and Rockwood. And I think the other, I think the waste energy and the compost are, we're just too far ahead of the curve. There's not options there, is my takeaway from our these months of meetings. And, and I mean, Craig and I both had the same awareness when Waste Away, or excuse me, when uh, Waste Management was here, both times, but especially their most recent time, the number one challenge is, is a collection. Without a collection system, it's a pipe dream to think we're gonna automatically just start recycling because we choose to. It's a, it's a long learning curve to get from our desire to a, a real manageable single stream recycling program. So I just played with that. Just I tried to just put an image to my thoughts and I think, I think uh, Pratt and Rockwood are viable today. I think Pr uh, Pratt indicated they would just about, they're almost ready to go it alone. I think it would behoove us to, to entice them or to partner with them to perhaps have more say so or more collaboration in how we handle certain waste. I think Rockwood is ready to tag with them uh, today. Um, so I played around with some numbers. If we if we mess with uh, if we uh, uh, manipulate the uh, the host benefit agreement, we could potentially lose our uh, tipping fee and we could lose our uh, free dumping. Uh, so those just some numbers we would have to protect, potentially contend with if we disrupt what Republic does. Our current budget is 4.8 million dollars. If we had to dump all of our stuff, there's another 2.6 million. If we build a recycling station or a transfer station, our debt's gonna be 733,000 a year. Our, our solid waste budget could just double overnight. That's a nickel on the tax base if, if just this minimal transition to our solid waste occurs. So number one, our cost we, is, is is concerning to me. We're, we're building new buildings already. We hit our fund balance by $30 million last year. So cost is, is, is so huge. So I come back to Republic's already here. We've got a landfill option in play. I think Pratt and Rockwood could, could be in here pretty quick and probably the most financially reasonable partnership would be with those guys. They got a product they're already consuming. They've got a supply chain process already in place. They're in Kentucky, they're in Nashville. We would be a great location. Um, the, the sheet that had the uh, 960, uh, 200,000 tons, that's a TDEC number of tons that go to middle point. And I just I stumbled across a newspaper article that had the 960,000 tons and it had the 32.1% from Rutherford 
and 69.7 out of Rutherford, and some other pieces of information that, that one could extrapolate the numbers at the bottom. So I was shocked to know there we're 900,000 tons a year. Rutherford County is half, is a third of that. We're already at our 300,000 tons. That number is very accurate. Our citizenry and 1,000 per ton is already occurring today. Obviously, Nashville is bringing another third, and the other counties are the final third. I just thought that was very interesting. Um, because that gives me some hope that if a, a Pratt were here, and they had a yard, a tipping yard, that was available to the 300,000 tons that are already moving through Rutherford County, a considerable portion of those tons would simply divert to any alternative to Middle Point just because they're going to get through it quicker. It may be more modern and cleaner. It may be indoor dumping. It may not be muddy. It may avoid the traffic jam on Jefferson. Now, granted, it could create another traffic jam wherever this activity is, but we're on the front of it now. We could plan for it. So I think if anybody came here, there would be a lot of traffic that would go their way. If everybody telling us they don't know how much is coming. I think there's more available already coming to Rutherford County that would divert to whomever we chose to partner with. Um, so that, again, I just wanted to throw out some food for thought. I'm glad to see the consensus seems to be Pratt and Rockwood are practical, are proven, are local, are available, and are not begging for money, but could be collaborators. So those are my takeaways. So oh, um, the, 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 the current landfill, uh, ideally, again, my magic bullet would be uh, reclaim, repurpose, uh, if the reclamation process is really undoable or too expensive, some hybrid of that. But ideally, we would use that 200 acres, 200 plus acres. Ideally, anything we do, we would, would go to that location, not Florence Road. I think we've got the land, we've got a landfill there. What may come to this transfer station and the 10% that has to be landfilled, we would put it in our own landfill. So just to kind of a side note, I think using our, having our own facility would make sense. But in the meantime, we may have to just do Florence and get this thing started. And I think it could be a success and pull some 20% out of the waste stream. Phil, thank you for these numbers. And again, as I have a couple of questions. So it, it appears, and I, I would I put credence in TDEX numbers if, if that, that's the source of these uh, percentages. So it, it sounds like we're already at nearly 300,000 tons per year. Um, so like you said, if we jump on the Pratt and Rockwood bandwagon, and say we're able to, you know, take 40% of these recyclables and C and D out of the waste stream. I, I, I missed the part about what we're doing with the, say, let's just say in round numbers, 50% of the remainder, <clears throat> remainder of the waste. Are we still utilizing Republic for that? Yes. Yeah, I think, and I think uh, Mayor said, uh, Pratt, Rockwood, and Republic. Okay. So this, are, are this the, follows in line with yes, the mayor's yeah, discussion. Yes, I okay. concur with that. Okay. The, the, they're the partnerships that are viable, current, functional, proven, economically feasible right now. And we're not having to test new technology or create new technologies. Right. Um, and, 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 uh, and I think I heard in, in a perfect world with unicorns and rainbows you could put a transfer station in first just to, to kind of stop the bleeding but then ideally in that perfect world we could use our own 200 acres at our current landfill site if you could if you could mine it mine it partially do whatever 
and use that 200 acres as a campus to grow. A, a campus, to grow perfect big, word. To yeah. grow big as yeah. we grow. Grow compost, grow waste energy, or, 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 or MSW to something. Yeah. Uh, and landfill. All those elements could be on that one 200 acre site. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating for that because yeah. I understand that the traffic jams and the, but again, a, a right. magic bullet that would be yeah. a vision. Yeah, question. I mean, that, that would be, in the, in the real world, that would be an ideal yeah. thing to use our own 200 acres out there for right. a campus facility yeah. or, or build a waste of And we're next facility. to a landfill. Yeah. Which is next to a bigger landfill. Yeah. Uh, and I use the word transfer here. I wish I'd put recycle center. I, I just, or a, a Pratt, whatever, a lay down yard would be whatever terms are appropriate for that yeah. first box. Well, as, as many and of the technologies we chatted with said, <clears throat> that, that went along with that idea, said transfer station, and then within the same building, put a recycle yeah, center. Yeah. And, and granted, we, th this was, I think, waste management's, the, the epiphany I had is we're, we're not ready for any, our collection is solid waste at the front door that, that's too contaminated to do anything else. I don't know, I think Pratt would be our expert on how do we start retrieving the single stream uh, OCC uh, fibers and papers that they have a market for now. They have expertise. I think if we engage them more thoroughly, they could start helping how do we actually create the single stream recycling that would go to this transfer station. They have the expertise to pull right. the products they don't use because it's just a pain they have to take. And so they've developed some expertise to get rid of the plastic, get rid of the metal, just to get their cardboard. And that's what they do for a living. And as I recall, Pratt said they would even come to our recycle centers to, to capture the cardboard. I think we bring their own fleet of trucks to capture the cardboard. I think they, okay. said, I think they said that. They, they did. And um, don't forget, they, they have an end product for everything. Aluminum, water bottles. They take those water bottles and grind them and sell them back to the carpet mills in Dalton, Georgia, and make carpet out of it. So yeah. that's what I like about them is they have an end product for everything they recycle. Well, the, is the prevalent, prevalent thought uh, based on TDEX numbers, we're getting uh, almost 70 percent, a thousand, a hundred, almost a million tons of out of out of county trash, and then we're thinking about letting Pratt bring out of county mixed paper and. Rockwood, out of county, C and D, along with that. I, I'm not suggesting that. My, it, it, their Pratt is close to deciding to be here with or without us. They acknowledge they have, and so I'm saying if we collaborate, then therefore we can have some authority over their business plan, which would be let's. Can they build a business model on the 300,000 tons that Rutherford County currently produces and not necessarily have to bring in the the others? I, but I, that, that's just a whole other concept I'm not ready to fully engage. But my initial thought is we're doing 300,000 in-house. If we partner, can we have more say in where they bring their product from? But I don't want to just open the door for – I'm not prepared to say we're the – trash capital of Middle Tennessee, let's bring your stuff in here. We'll, we'll create these great ways to, to handle it. I'm not, I'm not ready to go there. And so the, nine, the, the 960,000 tons was the TDEC number, and the first two percentages were from the article. I extrapolated the rest. I just want to be clear that, but the 960,200 was a published number that I picked up. Wayne, again, my notes are not etched in stone. Pratt said they thought we got about 260 tons of cardboard at our convenience centers, and if we combine that with the four cities, we could get nearly 7,000 tons, and they acted like that was a pretty good number to deal with. So that, that backs up Phil's statement about 
we may have it all right here within the county. And I think the, the scale of their operation, I, don't, I think if we satisfy it, they don't have to, and I think their scale, their scope, how they scale this facility would be based on what we have here, not what, it, what would it take to come in from elsewhere. Yeah, and then they, they work on the commercial, the business, the hospital, you know, all their cardboard too, and that, that's gravy for the biscuit, I would guess. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That, uh, you know, after I have read so, so many notes and go on over and listen to your and Mary's and the other, so the name that I just mentioned could become almost the same. I rank them up, you know, from one to five. The first one, best management. The reason why, because kind of be leading, leading the company, you know, they have about 50,000 uh, employees and they have uh, organics uh, facilities in that area too. Also financial, they seem to be available. And so the duration of the building, he's talking about 36 months. Now he said about two years, two and a half years and so forth. The second one, pret recycling and rock boot, and that would be the key to uh, add them on because they have done so many things and the other rest ways and design this would be, you know, someone may have some more knowledge and experience in so many years. That's all. Santo, do, would you buy into the thought that we've talked about today about Pratt and Rockwood being a partner with, with other others if need be that they're they're a solution to their specific expertise yes okay gotcha um shanto's picks if you didn't work clear was waste management he thought had the the, the biggest uh historical uh success and then pratt and rockwood were the two uh, choices devo you're awful quiet my friend There's not a whole lot left to say. Everybody's covered it pretty close. Ever since they give their first presentation, I like the idea of Pratt. I like the guy out of Lebanon with the Rockwood. I think we could use them both. What scares me is the decisions that we make is going to affect this county for a long, long time. We're talking 50 to 100 years, three, four generations of people. I don't want to make a mistake, which I know nothing's foolproof. We're talking about recycling, which is very important. I think that's something we really need to start on tomorrow. Every day we let go by, we're that many more days behind. Our transfer station, when the man from Waste Management management mentioned that the other night that made more sense to me than anything I had heard out of any of these pre presentations that I've sat through when he said we needed to consolidate our trash and see what we had to work with before we would know what we could do or what direction we could go in to me that made sense it may have just been me I don't know but I like that idea you know, we may not can use them. I have no idea until you put it all together. But I do think it's a very necessity that we start looking at a transfer station that could be developed into a MRF or a recycle center, one of the two or both. Because one day we're going to wake up and we're not going to have a place to go with our trash. Just like this past Friday or Saturday, Tuesday, the landfill shut down. All our trash had to be put on the hill yard. Oh, all the equipment went down the same day. 11 dozers. Now that's, that, that's just coincidence. Get ready for that to happen some more. You know, on the expansion issue, I don't know when the deadline's going to be from TDAC. You know, I don't look for them to turn it down. I really don't. That gives them 15 to 20 more years on their property. 
that's the only control we've got with the Republic is to not let them have any more property than what they can use their self. They'll always be there. The expansions that they've showed us on those maps, that didn't show the part where their shop sets or where the ball fields are. There's plenty of room right there to build a receiving station and they can continue taking trash from wherever they want to and truck it to another one of their landfills. We can't do nothing about it. But we can stop them from getting a bigger footprint. Now my takeaway from where they said they wanted our landfill, my takeaway from that, the way the guy explained it, they wanted the V that lays between our landfill and their landfill. They didn't want our landfill. They don't want nothing to do with it, the way I took it. They're gonna lay a liner up beside it, they're gonna cover it up with trash and she'll be there from now on. That's my take on it. But I really would like to, like to see this transfer thing come to life and come quickly because we don't have a plan B. We have nowhere else to go other than take it to Camden in a rollback truck or a front loader truck and you want to talk about expense, that's what will be expensive. If you can combine it down into a semi and truck it four or five loads or more in a trip, it'll cut your expense. You know, Mr. P, he's, he mentioned, you know, it affects more than one, dist one uh, district, it does. You know, it's got him, it's got Mr. Harris, it's got me. I was over on the Rutherford Boulevard yesterday morning at 8.30 and you could smell it on Rutherford and Manchester Pike. Now that's traveling a long ways. You know, you're gonna have trash, you're gonna have some smell. There's no doubt about it. And far as reclaiming our landfill, that will be a huge expense. It may be something we try to do ourselves if we're even capable of doing that. But to put a landfill back on that property, I would be totally against that. And to move a campus out there, it would be great because we've got 200 acres there. But if we're going to move a campus out on our county landfill property, we need to be ready to four-lane that highway coming off 231 to it because tra the road won't take the traffic. There's no way. And it could not be a good idea to have more trash brought that close to our water s supply anyway. We've already got issues. Whatever we do there with additional trash, there'll be additional issues. You're gonna have runoff. So you might wanna think about that before, you know, we get really carried away on that. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I, I, I wanna emphasize, first of all, everything you said was very good. I wanna emphasize one thing, and I think you're 100% right, because I'm looking at the hieroglyphics on my notes for Republic, and you said, I'm gonna back you up on this. You said, I don't really think they want our landfill to reclaim it, they just want the space. Because I drew, I, my hieroglyphics show a little V, I've got parentheses a little V. So they want the valley, they, they want the space, and because the, you know they've said they got no real interest in digging up that landfill. It, it's a liability nightmare for them, right? They would like to have the landfill. That's why they've been pushing it as part, part of their RFP. It's all or nothing. Give us the land or we're not doing business with you, which I hated from day one for bullying us around like that. But they want, they want the land, just like you said, throw a liner up against one side, throw a line up, liner up against the other side of theirs. They've got that huge V that I drew. They got the valley to fill up. They probably won't have to put a liner on their side. Just our side in the liner because yeah. it's already under under yeah liner. that's true it'd be double dipping but republic's in the business of making money and i you know i don't down them for that i'm in the business of making money it's just not hauling trash yeah but that's all they want is that v and i believe i heard them say that v would give them an additional 25 years on top of their expansion on their own property was that not right 25 plus 15 or 20 on their side yeah 
the, the, yeah, because uh, uh, an additional total of 50 was right. what sticks in my mind. Right, you know, 50 more years, all us, all everybody in here will be gone. I know I will be. And there will probably be other people here, and I hope they're as concerned about it as this group is. But I'm afraid they won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Piercy, Use your, I use, your mic, use your microphone. I don't. I, I understand where he's coming from. I still don't know if we do a, a deal with Republic as far as land. How's the Jackson Law not apply to that? I just don't see how they could put a landfill on there. And he said about the 25 more extra years. I just don't know how they're able to get around the Jackson Law on this because that land is not theirs. They'd be acquired it. And you wouldn't be able to put a landfill on there because Jackson Law says you can't do that. They don't own nothing. We own it. So how can that be a landfill? How can they? I, that's what I don't understand. They don't own anything. We own that. If, so if they acquire it, didn't that be the same thing as trying to expand a new landfill? If you give or buy joining property, will that not comply into what they've already got? For an extension. Piercy, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's something we need to find out because yeah, I don't the way know. I look at it, as far as the Jackson Law would apply, and I don't see how they could. You they'd have to file an expansion, and Jackson Law is in place. You can't do that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't believe that's happened, Mr. Chairman, anywhere in the state of Tennessee up to this point, even since the yes. Jackson Law was enacted. So this would be a legal question that we'll have to try to answer or pose. The great what if? Yeah. yeah. We need. We need to find out. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Yes, sir. You made, Mayor Ketron, you made the comment you had uh, discussed trash with uh, Mayor Cooper. Yes, sir. Do you know where his trash was going before he lost his provider? Uh, was Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Waste management. Okay. And their solid waste authority in the, inside their structure of, the, of their solid waste kind of regional authority. Uh, kind of shut them down, caught them by surprise, and and uh, it was going to Bordeaux. Well, and here, uh, Metro was bringing their what 60% of the trash that comes from Middle Point's Metro's trash. Was it all? Was it all the metropolitan area? The contract that Republic's got with Metro is that what they've lost, or just lost the curbside pickup? Yes, sir. Curbside pickup. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, hey, I've got my mind. Uh, in the beginning, my, one of my goals was to try to slow or stop other counties' trash from coming into Rutherford County. That that was really my goal. Mr. Harris thinks I hate Republic. I don't hate them. I hate what they're doing to our county with everybody else's trash. You know. He said Mr. Cooper might want to, you know, he could put it his on the rail and run it up to Pratt there if, if we do that by the spur system on the rail. Uh, you know, we still got other counties coming in to Republic in which we can't do anything about it till it fills up. But it looks like one of our long-term goals would be take care of our trash and let everybody else take care of their trash. Let them bury the expense of of whatever they have to do because it's going to be expensive anyway you know we've had it great everybody knows we've had free dumping forever 30 something years well it's going to be over one day and anything we choose to do anything different it's going to cost it's that simple thank you i'm gonna hush now anybody else all right i think this was uh enlightening um, our next meeting which is the actual public works and planning meeting is next Tuesday November 2nd committee want to you and I yeah good good point we'll go ahead and bring that up well mr. chairman uh, I'm looking for direction uh, I mean we just continue to talk about it does this committee want the chairman and I to go ahead and reach out and at least set up a meeting uh, to see what the temperature is of the other leaderships of, of our four municipalities and then report back to you? I think we're at that. 
why, position. Why would you not bring them in front of the whole committee? I'm not sure that they'll want to do that. I, I don't know that they'd want the uh, exposure, let's say. Are y'all going to have a private meeting? No. Yes, sir. Will it be televised? Typically, they're not. No decisions are going to be made. Uh, I, I, I think just to sit around the conference room table in a, in a, in a more relaxed atmosphere just to, to talk and see where they're at, we need to ask the question. Laverne, are you in? Do you want to participate? They might say no. They may, they don't care about solid waste. They don't have a solid waste department. They may just say, let our private contractors continue to come on down here and take our trash out. I don't know. I, I know that, that uh, Mayor Reed, she's told me that she's in. Once we get through this process, she's, she's willing to sit down and see where we're at. Let us just inform her of where, what we've gone through through this process. It's just uh, uh, some more awkward, and you know, because then, then say, well, their councilmen are going, well, why do they want you to come in front of them? Why can't we come? And then we end up with how many councilmen on each four cities, and then we end up everybody sitting around and yeah, not talking or not being effective. I I think leadership needs to just find out who's in and out. And then whenever we figure that out, then as we talk about who's on board, as we again talk about who we're going to partner with, those certainly are back to this kind of a atmosphere. But I think just the, the, the mayors talking, I, I don't need... I, I don't even need to be there, but it's been in a courtesy call to me as chairman, but uh, that's just my opinion. Mr. Chairman, y'all had said last month or last meeting uh, with BFI going to them to uh, see their, I'm sorry, waste management. <laughs> I, get, I start talking about all these different companies and try to, I'll, I'll say whoever, but waste management and seeing their MRF. You know, they made a, um yes. invite to us, or do y'all still want to do that? If you do, I just need to get a good time frame. And really, talking with Mr. Owen, it's you tell me a time, and we'll just make it available. So, I mean, if y'all could talk about that and give me a date and time, we'll do it. And Or if you want to think about it and get back with us. Uh, but if you want to throw a couple of dates out and say, hey, this works and see if this works for you tonight, if you want to do that, if not, that's fine too. I was just making sure we followed up with what y'all wanted us to do in the last meeting. Rachel, <clears throat> Rachel set up like a little survey monkey with some times and dates and let us pick and whoever, or, or maybe they'll have to do too. Because Thanksgiving's going to be up on us, Christmas going to be up on us. I know everybody's going to be kind of you know, in and out. I didn't know if you wanted to wait till January, you want to do it now. I mean, we can, we can get it in definitely in November here at first part of November, but just wanted to us not forget about that if you wanted to do it. Right. Speaking of deliverables, did I dream that Republic was also going to kind of put together some rough numbers for us as to what it would cost if they just did our trash and not did other counties? Yeah, I think I think they owe us something. So, would you mind checking on that? I will. Okay. All right. So the the question is, um, uh, mayor, the mayor and I would like to go forward and meet with the four city officials to find out who wants to play. So I have no objection to that. I just had the question. I'll make the motion for y'all to proceed with that. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, no money being spent, so uh, roll call, or not, we don't need a roll call. All those in favor, signify aye. aye. Any opposed? 
thank you. We will we will do that and let you know what's going on. Um, Rhonda, thank you for coming. Uh, we will see you Tuesday, November second. Be safe. Thank you all. Chili cook all Friday, eleven to one. It's going to rain, so we'll be inside. <laughs> Bring your umbrella and happy Halloween.